What is the universe expanding into? The short answer is, nobody knows. But when people say that, what they actually mean, what they actually want to know is, how come physicists say that the universe is expanding if they don't even know what it is expanding into? Even though this is a better way of formulating the question, it exposes a clearly flawed assumption that if something expands, it must expand inside of something else. But here's the thing. Expansion and being inside of something are two completely different concepts. They are independent from one another. Unfortunately, physics alone, as well as intuition, is incapable of explaining this distinction. And that's where the confusion lies. In pure mathematics, if you take a space of dimension n, you can choose to embed it in a higher dimensional space, say n plus 1 dimensions, or more. Or even in a space with the same dimension n. This larger space is called the ambient space. So, for example, you could embed a point, which is zero-dimensional, into a line, which is one-dimensional. You could embed it into a plane, 2D, or into a cubic region, 3D, or into the surface of a sphere, 2D, or even into another point, 0D, and so on. What about the line segment? Well, you could embed it into a line, into a cube, or even into a curved sheet. In this last case, the line segment lost one of its properties, since it's not straight anymore, right? Not necessarily. First of all, what is an embedding? An embedding is a map that associates each point of a source space to a unique point in a tangent space, such that, first of all, the points stay distinct, so no two different points in the source space get mapped to the same place. And second, the shape and structure of the source space are preserved. So the topology does not change, like preserving continuity, genus, and the openness of subsets. If you want a rigorous explanation of all the concepts we talked about here, check out the PDF link in the description. Just like with all of our videos, there you'll find a written summary of the video with a bunch of extra details for you to learn better, faster, and deeper. For example, in nature, when a ray of light passes near a massive object, it appears to bend, as if gravity were pulling it. But what's actually happening is that the ray of light is following a geodesic, which is the straightest possible path in the curved spacetime. In other words, the ambient space around that mass. So that's the very definition of a straight line in this particular ambient space. From our perspective, in flat space, the path looks curved. But to the light itself and to any observer living within that curved region, the path is still straight. Mathematically, this is exactly what an embedding captures. The light's path remains straight, intrinsically, even though it appears extrinsically curved when embedded into a larger reference space. The underlying idea here is Gauss's famous Theorema Egregium, or Remarkable Theorem, which says that intrinsic properties do not depend on how the source space sits inside of an ambient or target space. Some examples of intrinsic properties are the Ricci curvature, distances, angles, geodesics, areas, volumes, and even expansion rate. One of the key requirements for a property to be intrinsic is that it must be derivable only from the metric g mu nu of the space. In other words, from the internal ruler that allows us to measure distances, angles, and curvatures without relying on how the space is embedded in any higher dimensional setting. For example, we don't need to travel all the way to space and look at the Earth from its ambient space in order to see that it's curved. We can simply observe intrinsic phenomena that takes place on its surface, like that the sum of angles of a triangle over large distances is always greater than 180 degrees, that the shortest routes are always great circle paths, not what we would call straight line anymore, and also geodesic deviation, so two initially parallel paths eventually converge at the poles. This implies that the Earth's surface could very well be all there is in the universe, effectively being the universe itself, and even then we would still be able to note that it has intrinsic curvature. 
That's exactly what happens to what we currently call the known universe. We can measure its intrinsic curvature and all the other intrinsic properties without ever assuming that it is embedded in a larger ambient space. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. By the way, intrinsic properties are very important in physics, because they represent physical characteristics of space-time that are independent of coordinate systems or embedding choices. In other words, they're invariant under reparametrization and are the same for all observers, which makes them perfect for expressing physical laws. As we said earlier, expansion rate is one of these intrinsic properties of a space. When astronomers observe galaxies moving away from each other, they are measuring an intrinsic property of the universe. So, even if we have no idea whether the universe is embedded in a higher dimensional reality, or whether there is no outside at all, we can still say, with confidence, that it is expanding. That's the power of mathematics. It allows us to describe the behavior of the universe from within, even when we can't possibly visualize it. Of course, our brains are so used to perceiving the three-dimensional world around us that we have a hard time trying to imagine a universe that sort of expands on itself. This is the mathematical formula that describes the expansion of our universe. Rho is the matter-energy density. K is the curvature parameter. Lambda is the cosmological constant. And A is the scale factor which depends on time, t. So the scale factor changes over time. Its first derivative, or rate of change, is what we call the expansion rate of the universe. Let's see a simplified illustration of how the scale factor A works. We start by defining a two-dimensional square manifold, where each point is labeled by two intrinsic coordinates, x and y, ranging from 0 to 1. Notice how this coordinate system does not extend to points outside of the square, since it's not supposed to be embedded in a higher dimensional space. And that's why these coordinates are intrinsic. Actually, this representation itself is flawed. And this is so because there is no ambient space to begin with. In order to really study only intrinsic properties, we should view the square covering the entire screen, since it's all there is. Unfortunately, this is technically impossible because YouTube's screen is rectangular. But you get the idea. Now, let's define a metric in it. In other words, a ruler to measure distances and angles. This metric describes a flat space, but with a time-dependent scale factor A of t in it. Here, ds is the infinitesimal proper distance between neighboring points. In order to make the example more concrete, let's define a linear scale factor explicitly. This means that at time t equals 0, the square has side length 1. At time t equals 1, a of 1 is 3. So all distances are tripled. At t equals 2, a of 2 is 5. And so all distances are 5 times longer than at the beginning. And so on. This universe is expanding at constant speed. By the way, our actual universe is not expanding at a constant rate, but actually at an increasing rate. This means that the expansion is speeding up. The distances between galaxies are growing faster and faster. In mathematical terms, the second derivative of the scale factor A of t is positive. Actually, in some really distant parts of the universe, galaxies are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. Not because they are speeding up through space, but because space itself is stretching. Back to our toy model of the universe. Let's take two points, P and Q. Their coordinate separations are dx equals 0.5 and dy 0.25. Therefore, the so-called proper distance between points P and Q, when using the metric, is this. D of t, or ds in this case, is a of t times the square root of the two measures, dx and dy, each one of them squared. After calculating everything, we find this expression, which is linear. As mentioned earlier, the expansion rate is calculated with the derivative of the scale factor with respect to time. So, taking the derivative of 2t plus 1, we get 2. 
And therefore, for each second, the distance between all points increases by a factor of 2 per unit distance. Notice how we calculated the expansion rate without ever referring to any ambient space, just in terms of intrinsic properties. In conclusion, the expansion of our universe doesn't depend on the existence of a sort of larger ambient space around it. We know that the universe is expanding because we can observe experimentally that galaxies are moving away from each other. And this is done through a physical phenomenon called redshift. And all that is required are measurements of purely intrinsic properties. Don't forget that we have a research section on our website, where you can send your own personal research. More details in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.